Hello beautiful friends, welcome back to the channel. So today I have some dwarf tomatoes that we need to plant up in our green stock. So let's go on ahead. Let me go on ahead and show you what that looks like because we are going to be refreshing the soil that is in our containers. We are not gonna be dumping all of it out, but I wanna show you kind of what that process looks like so that you can maybe save a few bucks on soil and still have an epic amount of growth because if you've had plenty of moisture over the winter and or you've been watering your green stalks, then your soil has not gone hydrophobic. Hydrophobic is when your soil is no longer absorbing any type of liquid because there's no nutrients, there's no prebiotics, there's no probiotics. So the water just basically runs through and there's nothing for the plant to hold on to. Since that is not the case for our green stalks this year, what we are gonna do is we're just going to refresh them. So I'm gonna show you that process and then what it looks like to plant out dwarf tomatoes in a vertical planter because no matter where you are, you can grow massive amounts of food. When you have plants that are maybe a little bit more compact but still as bountiful and you have vertical growing systems. So let's go on ahead and get this video started. Okay, so this is of course the green stock vertical grow tower. And as you can see, our soil level has gone down a little bit. That's primarily from the plants that I removed out from the fall. So all of the cabbage, kale, chard, uh, bok choy that we grew in these, the roots will hang on to some of the soil. So you will lose some soil that way. Oftentimes with vertical containers or pots of any sort, containers of any sort, you will have soil filtered down. Now the reason, well, one of the many reasons that I love the green stock in particular is that that seems to be less of an issue. So primarily my soil loss tends to come just from when I am taking out the dead plant structures. So as you can see, our pocket is a little bit low, but that's okay. We need it to be a little bit low because we need to be able to take our tomato plants that you see here. We've got leaves right here. I'm just going to go on ahead and I'm going to strip them off. In fact, I'm going to strip off that bottom one here because as you guys know, I plant my tomatoes slightly controversially. So you can see all of these little fibers down here. They will turn into a secondary root system that is going to help lock the plant into the soil. Now you don't have to do this in your area if you are not in a very like tornadic windy zone. Um, then don't worry about doing it. I do it because I am in Tornado Alley. I have a lot of high winds even when there isn't tornadic activity going on. So I just go on ahead and give all of my plants a little bit more than what they actually would technically need. Now we're just going to kind of work these guys out of the pot. Got a fairly good root system on here. And I'm just going to kind of shove them in and I'm going to kind of angle my plant slightly not a whole lot just a little and I have this beautiful GP soil potting mix that I'm going to add in it has a very very gentle fertilizer already included primarily worm castings if I understood correctly so that's awesome because you guys know I love my worm castings. So I'm just gonna add that in for the nutrients and to help recover any loss in the soil from the winter planting that we did. And then voila, now planting tomatoes and peppers. When you do this, I would recommend that you at least do every other pocket and not plant them right next together. Even though tomatoes and peppers do love to snuggle because you are working with more of a container space here, their root systems still do need some space to well root. Um, so every other hole seems to work well for me personally. And oftentimes in the summer, I can actually sneak things that tend to be a little bit more uh, cold preferential. So things like kale, things like lettuce that don't like the heat. Usually once my 
tomatoes have grown up or my peppers have grown up, they offer enough shade that I can put those in here and do a heat tolerant lettuce or kale or spinach variety and I can still be getting some greens during the high heat of summer. So just a, just a side note of what you can do with that pocket because those plants do not have as large of a root system so they're not gonna be competing with your tomatoes or your peppers that you are planting in your green stock. All right, now let's go on ahead and finish getting these other two plants planted out and we'll call it good for the day. Okay friends, so just in case you were wondering what type of a dwarf tomato we are dealing with here, this is a sneaky sauce tomato and it's kind of in the San Marzano Roma category. So it's going to be really, really good for any type of tomato sauce, tomato paste, probably even, um, I might even use some of this in my salsa because I'm really low on salsa. So that's actually one of the things that I'm gonna be focusing on this year is making me some salsa because I need some back stock of that. But overall, planting out in your green stock in this manner is actually going to be very, very cost efficient and it's going to be very, very productive. Now, green stock also has tomato supports. If you are wondering about what I'm going to do as these guys get bigger, they're not gonna get like huge because they are a dwarf tomato, but because they are an heirloom variety, and I think a semi-determinant. So determinant means basically there's a determined size, determined amount of fruit and height that you're gonna get on the plant. Indeterminate means an indeterminate amount of fruit and an indeterminate amount of size. So we are kind of in an in-between with this one, if I recall correctly. But the good news is, is that trellising system that comes from green stock is going to hold these guys up beautifully. And I'll walk you through that as the year progresses on so that you can see that and see that it is possible and easy and productive to grow in a vertical space like this. And it is possible to grow a lot of food in a space like this. Side note, I also have in this green stock chives from last year and this is important because this is part of our pest preventative measures that we are doing so i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you found it helpful and inspiring for you to be able to grow right where you're at even if you have a small space i am going to go on ahead and link my tomato planting video at the end of this video so that you can get a little bit more information on plant well a little bit more information on how i plant my tomatoes because I've just found that it works for me and hopefully it'll end up working for you wherever you are. So go on ahead and check that out at the end of this video and don't forget to get my free small gardening guide. That's right, it is free for you. I'm going to put a direct link in the description box below for you to grab that today. And as always, keep it simple, natural and essential. We'll see you on the next video. Bye guys.